right? And then we can have our else statement. We can have it um, run this here. I need to indent this properly. Let's see. It's not indented properly. It needs to align with the try, so that's good. Let's see. It's not aligning properly, right? Let's see. Try to do this, except higher error. Let's see what's wrong. I'm not sure why. Okay, let's see. Local variable a rich um, reference before assignment. Okay, okay, I get it. All right. So we need to set average to be equal to zero before that, right? Let's see. So over here, it's trying to read it's trying to read num.txt, and it's not finding it. So that means that um, we are trying to over, we are over here. We are trying to use average, and average it doesn't know what average contains. We didn't initialize average before, right? Error. Um, let's actually, let's remove this else for now. Let's remove this else for now because we're also going to find um, value error. So let's remove this else for now. Let's find an error error. Else, we find an average. No. All right. So this is let's let's uh, let's make this part of the code. Actually, let's make this part of the code. I'm going to undo here so I don't confuse you. I'm going to undo. All right. So we are going to allow the program. Okay. I'm going to undo here. Hold on. Move the try. So th this is how the program was. Right. It's crashing because it can't find num.txt. If we if we t uh, change it to numbers.txt and we run the program, it works. It finds the average. All right. So we know that this line of code here has the potential to create an I/O error. Right. So let's try again. I'm, I undo. I, I undid. <laughs> or, or yeah, I undid the 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 code just so I don't confuse you all. So. We're going to create a try statement. We are saying try to run this entire block of, block of code. I don't know why I left the average out. So try to run this entire block of code, and I indented it, right? We are running this entire block of code, and we are saying that keep running it, but if you encounter an exception, which is, which is an IO error, then go ahead and print a message saying that Oops. An IO error occurred. Just that for now, okay? And then now, now let's have our else statement. Um, let's see. But we're still going to get an uh, error with average here, but we can fix that. So let's have our else statement. Mm, let's see. Okay, let's have our else statement and then go ahead and print the average is this, right? Okay, so let's run this and it says the average is 13, 13 13.68875. And when we try to change the file name, let's see what happens. It says an error occurred. All right, so it's fine. It's fine. So I was thinking, I was, I was actually, you know, thinking um, too much. All right, so what's happening is we are trying to run this block of code because we know that a line here, in this case, this, this line, has the potential to throw an I.O. error when, for example, we, we try to tell the program to open a file that doesn't exist. Number.txt doesn't exist, but numbers.txt does. So it's it's... We've, write, we've written a program to try to check this code, but if there's an I.O. error, print this message, an I.O. error occurred. But if there's no I.O. error, that's the else part, then print an average, the, sorry, the average is average. The average is what's, whatever the value of average is, right? So it's two things. It's trying to check this code 
to see if there's an IO error. If there's an IO error, it prints out this message and it's done. The else part is skipped. It just prints this, this, this message and the program ends. Else, if there's no IO error, then print out the average as average. So if there's no IO error, which means if we tr tell you to look for numbers.txt and it finds it, in this case, it will find it, right? Because we know the numbers.txt ex exist here. So when I run this program, because there was no IO error, because it was able to find numbers of TXT, the else part run. Else part means that if there's no IO error, print it. So try to run this. If there's an IO error, print the, the error message, skip the else part. The program is done. But if there's no IO error, right? Else, if there's no IO error, print the, the, this message. The average is whatever the value of average is. And then finally, just um, print a statement saying end of program. All right, so I was thinking um, too much. I, again, it's been a while since I, um, you know, continued um, these videos. But again, it's going to take, um, I should be informed very soon. <laughs> so finally, we'll run regardless of what happens here, regardless of if the else part runs or if the accept exception part runs. It doesn't matter. If there's an exception, and then an, an error message displayed, the else part won't run. Finally, will always run regardless of whatever happens here, right? If there's an exception, an error, uh, if, there's, if there's an exception, the, ex um, the error message will be displayed. Else part won't run. If there's no exception, the else part will run. But finally, at the end, will always display. So when I run this program, end of program, it will always display regardless. When I try to change the file name and this, see, that's going to cause an IR error, which means that we're going to see this error message. The else part won't run, right? If there's an if there's an IO error, if there's an IO error, then display this, right? So it displays this an IO error and an end of program. Finally, will always run. If it was able to find the file, that means there was no IO error. So go ahead and display the average as average, and then finally display this message. So, right, there's no IO error, so it, f it displays the average is average, whatever the value of average is, and then finally it displays end of program. So again, finally will always run. So now we've handled IO errors. That is when, for example, you try to tell it to open a file, um, and the file doesn't exist, it doesn't, find, it doesn't find that file. In this case, it found the file because numbers.txt exist in our program. All right. The next thing it wants us to do is um, handle value error exceptions. Value error exceptions is, for example, it, it, it even told us, it said, handle value error exceptions that are raised when the items that are read from the file are, um, from the file are converted to a number, right? So if, you tr if, it, if the program tries to read something from a file um, and it tries to convert it to a number and it's having problems, that's, for example, a value error. So over here, numbers.txt, all these are numbers. So this line over here, is taking whatever was read from that, that particular line, converting it to an integer, and storing it in total, and adding it to total, right? So over here, we are converting whatever was read from the file in this particular line here, and converting it to an integer. If at any time there's a problem, okay, when the program is trying to convert that the content of this variable to an integer, it's going to raise a value error, right? Because it will, it will complain that it cannot converts that value to an integer. In this case, there are all numbers in this file, so it's able to convert all of these to integers. The reason why we need to convert is it's because anytime you read anything from the file, you are reading it as a string. Even though there, there are numbers in here, we are reading them as strings. And that's why we need to convert them to integers, right? That's why we need to convert them to integers. So if, for example, two is read as a string. 6 is read as a string, 4 is read as a string, but 4 as a string converted to an integer, integer will give you the number 4. Right, so if we try to um, convert, let's say, let's change some of the numbers to, let's say, characters. This is going to be, at some point, a line in the program, and if it tries to convert that line to an integer, it's going to have an error, a value error. Okay, we, how do you convert this to a number? There's no way. So it's going to crash. 
and you need we need code to handle it but i just want us to see the, the crash or the error so when i run this it says invalid literal for int with base 10. that means that it's you see it's a valid error over here we need to write code to handle that handle that right so um let's do that this is an exception here again we need to write code so that it displays something nice to the user or at least tell the user what's wrong all right so we know that this again this same block of code that we are trying to run first of all it has the potential to create create an IO error we've handled an IO error second of all it has the potential to to, to cause a value error which we've just seen so we've handled the IO error here let's also go ahead and handle the value error right so we are saying try to run this code and if you face an exception that is an IO error display the message let's continue and say if you face an exception that is a value error. And this is a keyword. It's spelled exactly this way. This is a keyword it's spelled exactly this way. You can tell from the question that it, it even spelled it that same way because they are, they are keywords. So let's continue. If, it's, if you encounter an exception, that's an IR error. Display this message. If you encounter an exception, that's a value error. Display this message and say that an Oh no, a value error occurred, right? 